Buenas noches, everyone. My name is Carlos Menchaca. I am currently a city council member here in Brooklyn, District 38. I'm also the chair of the Immigration Committee and have been doing some incredible work with people on the ground uh, in the name of our immigrant families that we've been protecting here uh, in the city of New York. And uh, it is my pleasure to be here tonight with all of you and really to celebrate life. Uh, the Refugee Translation Project is something that I have uh, learned about and have been such, um, I've been so inspired by the work uh, that this organization does. And we are gonna be, not only listen to some of the folks that are gonna be highlighted tonight, but I hope uh, uh, who will speak next, Damien, the founder and creator of this vision, will tell you a little bit more about the organization and what they're up to. Uh, before that, though, I just want to bring a lot of gratitude to the work that we've been doing here in the city of New York through the city council. We've been able to do a lot of work to protect immigrants, families, and workers here in the city with the introduction and the passage of a bill that created the, uh, the first municipal identification program here in the city of New York really gave for, for, for many families the first time to have uh, government issued ID to be able to access schools and go to PTA meetings and go to uh, parent teacher conferences for parents, immigrant parents, uh, to get connected to adult literacy classes, to have a library card, or when interacting with the police, uh, have something that they can use to engage police departments. This has been a big game changer and has really uh, made us think differently in the city of New York about how we incorporate through our democratic process voices who can't vote in elections right now uh, we're about to change that uh, but can engage in a very meaningful way that's respectful and full of humanity and and i love that we are going to be uh, thinking a lot about the mission of the refugee translations project uh, that is at the heart of what is at the heart of this organization is access through language access and the city of new york has struggled to ensure that everyone and especially now during COVID that people have the information that they deserve that can really make a difference uh, and for so many families it was life and death be it through a deportation proceeding or through COVID information and all the changes that are coming through. So with that so much to celebrate uh, I want to hand it over to Damien uh, co-founder and uh, to give us a little bit about uh, himself and the organization for tonight. Welcome. Thank you so much, Carlos. Uh, it was a lovely introduction. Um, my name is Damian Harris Hernandez. Um, as Carlos mentioned, I am the founder, co-founder and director of the Refugee Translation Project, which is a Brooklyn-based um, nonprofit that provides translation services to people who are um, seeking asylum and other immigration relief via our, um, TPS, or which is temporary protective status or um, um, stopping deportations. Um, and what, um, and we work with other organizations here in, in New York. We just joined the New York Immigration Coalition. So we're very excited about that um, as well as their um, language access coalition um, to bring about the yeah, access to resources. Um, Mainly what we've been focusing on, you know, for the past, since we started was providing access, like more equitable access to uh, the immigration system by allowing people to um, have all their documents that they need translated. Um, an asylum case, for example, will take, um, well, first of all, you have to fill out the application. You also have to submit a statement saying why you are persecuted. Um, and then you also have to provide the evidence to back that up. And so translation is not a, um, it's, it's not, it's a service that can be a financial burden to a lot of people and provide access uh, and provide, or and pr pr present this barrier, like how much can I afford to translate? Can I afford to translate at all? And we eliminate that barrier by um, providing the service free to individuals um, who are not supported by another organization. So people will come to us who are doing, who are representing themselves or they're represent, or represented by a lawyer who's not covering their fees. 
Um, and so we provide those services free of charge to um, those people. Um, we also work with other groups. Um, we work with IRAP, which is International Refugee Assistance Project. We also work with um, the Envision Freedom Fund, which used to be the Brooklyn Community Bail Fund, um, and also the Immigrant Defense Project, as well as numerous uh, law firms who are doing pro bono work um, to provide their clients with um, translations, professional translations. Um, and a lot of this, the stuff we do is um, providing information access as well with these other organizations. Like how do, when the, Af the crisis in Afghanistan hit, we were um, really quick to translate all the material that people needed, one, to get out of Afghanistan, two, to um, access the SIV process, the social immigrant visa process, um, and all sorts of other resources um, for a, a number of our partner organizations. So access is definitely um, at the heart of the Refugee Translation Project. Um, I just wanted to spend another minute or so about um, how we started. We've, we started actually um, because I work as a, I was working as a freelance Turkish translator. Um, don't ask me how I got into Turkish translation, but um, um, I started receiving a lot of requests for, um, for asylum applications from people I knew from, from Turkey. I lived in Turkey for a while um, who needed to apply for asylum after the crackdown following the coup. Um, and then soon I was inundated with all these requests and I could not handle all this you know, volunteer, volunteer work. And so uh, my wife, Jennifer, who many of you know, suggested I start um, a crowdfunding uh, campaign to to cover the cost of these translations and get more people on board because I couldn't do it all. Um, and so basically we just built the um, organization up from that, hiring translators as we got requests for them. So we added on Arabic soon after and French, another Turkish translator. And soon now we have 13 languages that we work in and we're working on building more, um, like building out more languages as well as the need arises and we make partners with um, other organizations that have different um, language needs. So that's us. I want to thank everyone who came. I want to thank our guests um, who are here. Um, our performers were in for a real treat tonight. I want to thank our host, Carlos Menchaca, for um, emceeing our event, and also all of you for showing up and supporting the Refugee Translation Project. I really appreciate it. Awesome. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Damien. And uh, I, I hope that the the work that you have started and the the family that you've built continues to grow um, and i hope everyone's thinking a lot about how they can support the organization and um you know before we head to the first uh, performer i i just want to say how as as an elected official and representative in in a city like new york where immigrants are so embedded into the fabric of of the city uh, there are so many gaps that government leaves and language access is one of them that people, unless they go through it, don't really understand it. And so it really takes folks like you and everyone that is part of this organization. Uh, every ounce of your effort is felt and has transformed people's lives through asylum uh, applications or, or workforce. Uh, and that burden is real for families and, and individuals. Uh, but it is something that is uh, transformative. And so I just want to say thank you for, for that work. Um, what, what we can do now is really transition uh, into the art space that, uh, that you all all been invited to. And what I want to ask you all tonight is to consider how diversity uh, and really diversity in art, in music, in people, in ideas that people share, in our food, in the experiences that we have as humans, the diversity that you experience every day, how that makes communities stronger, better, uh, more understood, uh, playful. How can we consider uh, that the art supports organizations who are committed to helping people thrive in our communities? Uh, in our communities? Uh, and so as you kind of keep that in mind, um, we want to think a lot about how we celebrate beauty and art. And when I think about art, I think about the expression of our humanity. And when we can bring art and social justice together, I think some beautiful things can happen. And 
and you'll have some of that tonight. Uh, and to that point, we are ready for our first guest.